This presentation is part two of a two-part presentation series on researching. Be sure to watch part one before you begin. In this presentation, we'll go over how to research a topic for a writing assignment and find sources to use as support. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand the difference between primary sources and secondary sources, set up a system to organize your sources, come up with keywords to search for sources, and find both physical and electronic sources through a library to use as support in your writing assignment for your working thesis. Once you've completed the steps necessary to prepare for researching, as discussed in part one of this series, you can begin conducting specific research on your topic. Conducting specific research and finding sources on your topic is probably the most time-consuming step of the writing process. However, the more time you dedicate to this step, the easier it will be to write about your topic in the drafting step. Start by reviewing the instructions for your writing assignment to see what types of sources you're expected to use in your essay and how many sources and citations you're required to include. For example, some assignments require you to use peer-reviewed sources only, like academic journals, while others allow you to use websites, editorials, and personal experiences as support. In academic writing, you will generally use two kinds of sources, primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are derived from original, first-hand information. Some examples of primary sources are speeches, historical documents, government or legal documents, original art or literature, diary entries, letters, scientific studies, surveys, and interviews. Secondary sources, on the other hand, are second-hand sources that are focused on describing, analyzing, or interpreting primary sources. Some examples are literary analyses, academic journal articles, and book, movie, or literature reviews. Here are a few other examples. The Constitution is a primary source, whereas an academic journal that interprets the Constitution is a secondary source. The poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, is a primary source, while a literary analysis on that poem is a secondary source. A presidential election poll is a primary source, while a newspaper article that analyzes the results of that poll is a secondary source. While you can use both primary and secondary sources as support in academic essays, it's important to verify that any secondary sources you use are considered reliable. For more details on distinguishing between fact and misinformation in evaluating sources, see my presentation called Evaluating Sources. Additionally, don't forget that all sources should be read rhetorically. Before reading, you should adopt a skeptical mindset and preview the text to get a feel for what you're about to read. Then you should read the text thoroughly, annotate the text, and finally reflect on what you've read. For more details about reading rhetorically, see my presentation called Reading Rhetorically. To save yourself a lot of trouble and time, you should come up with a system for organizing your sources before starting on your research. Here are a few methods you could use. First, if you have access to cloud-based online storage, such as Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, you can save digital copies of your sources there. This option is especially helpful if most of your sources are electronic. In addition, several apps and programs are available that allow you to annotate sources digitally. Those that prefer hard copies can print out electronic sources, staple the pages together, and annotate them directly on the page. Write a short summary at the top of the first page, highlight lines that you think you could use as support in your essay, write questions in the margins or add them to your KWL chart, and circle words and allusions that you're unfamiliar with. 
If the bibliographic details of a source aren't included in your printout, be sure to write down the information you'll need to cite your sources later on. You can also use a word processing program like Microsoft Word to keep track of your sources. For this option, you can type out or cut and paste each source's title, author, and other bibliographic details, write a short summary of the source's overall claim and supporting points, and make a note about how you think you can use the source in your essay, or copy and paste lines that you'd like to quote. Be careful though, if you copy any lines from the source, be sure to put quotation marks around them to remind yourself that they are direct quotations and not your own notes, and write down the page number. Similarly, you can write out source details by hand using pen and paper instead of typing them into a word processor. Finally, if you prefer physical sources, such as books from the library, use tabs to mark passages that you think will be helpful to your research and write notes and summaries on sticky notes. Remember that starting your research with a good plan for organizing your sources will save you a lot of trouble when it comes time to write your essay. Students who don't organize their sources often end up forgetting where their quotations come from or having to read their sources over and over again. Libraries have everything you need to conduct your research. Whether you prefer physical sources or electronic sources, your school's library is a great place to start your research, and your librarian can help with both options. Most libraries have reference librarians who can help you find sources specifically for your research topic and save you a lot of time and hassle. Libraries can also serve as great places to study and read your sources, and usually offer study rooms and quiet spaces to work along with computers, printers, and other valuable resources. You can visit the library in person to find physical sources such as printed books, journals, encyclopedias, magazines, and newspapers, along with audio and video sources. Most libraries have an electronic catalog of all of their physical sources that can be easily searched by keyword, author, title, or subject. Search results include descriptions of the sources and call numbers to help you locate them on the library's shelves. Ask your librarian for a tutorial on how to use the library's electronic catalog to find sources. Then ask for a tour or a map of the library so you can locate them. If you prefer printed, hard copy books, you can often find an entire section of books dedicated to your topic in the library. It's easy to browse through books quickly by scanning the table of contents in the books and reading chapter or article titles that may be relevant to your topic. Or you can flip to the index in the back of the books to search for key words. Additionally, oftentimes scholarly books and articles will cite from other related sources that are also documented at the end. Following a trail of sources can save you a significant amount of time and effort when researching. Feel free to take advantage of other people's hard work whenever you can. Libraries also provide access to a wealth of electronic sources through the library's electronic catalog, research databases, and online subscriptions to journals, magazines, and newspapers. Sometimes, full copies of ebooks, along with government and legal documents and audio and video sources, can be accessed through the library's electronic catalog without having to visit the library in person. The library's research databases can also be accessed from home. Research databases are online listings of electronic sources that contain a variety of scholarly journal, magazine, and newspaper articles, along with ebooks and video sources. Most libraries allow you to search for research databases by title or by subject. If you're not sure what database to start with, Academic Search Complete is a great first choice as it provides access to thousands of full text, peer reviewed articles across multiple disciplines. JSTOR is another good database for finding quality sources on a variety of subjects. 
scale and context opposing viewpoints is a good option if you want access to various sources on current issues. There are also lots of databases dedicated to other subjects like literature, business, and the sciences. Additionally, your library may have subscriptions to popular online journals, magazines, and newspapers that you can access through databases such as ProQuest. Before you can get started finding sources through the library catalog or through the research databases, you'll need to come up with some keywords on your topic to use as search terms. Using keywords that are too broad in the search bars of catalogs or databases will likely give you very broad results. For example, a search for the words climate change in Academic Search Complete produces over 200,000 results. To find more specific results, you'll need to come up with more specific keywords. First, take a look at your working thesis. Then, underline the words you feel are most important. Usually these are nouns. Let's use this thesis as an example. Climate change can be mitigated through the use of alternative energy sources, such as bioenergy, geothermal energy, and hydropower. Here, you might underline the words climate change, alternative energy sources, bioenergy, geothermal energy, and hydropower. Using a database like Academic Search Complete, try typing some of these terms in the search bar. A search for alternative energy sources gives you over 38,000 results. To narrow these results down even more, click on Advanced Search. Advanced Search lets you add more search boxes so that you can search for additional keywords along with your original keywords. By adding bioenergy and climate change underneath alternative energy sources, the database will now search for sources that contain all three of the keyword phrases that you entered into the three search boxes. This new search gives you 255 results. Notice how the database also gives you options to limit your results to only sources that are full text, peer reviewed, and published within a specific date range, such as within the last 10 years. By doing a new search with these changes, you get 59 results, which is a much more manageable number of sources to sort through compared with your first search. Since the results are listed by relevance, you can quickly scan the titles of the first several sources listed to determine if they are relevant to your research. The results page also shows additional information about the sources, such as the author's names, when and where they were published, and whether or not they are available as full text articles. If you click on the title of a source, you will be brought to the source page which often offers an abstract or summary of the source. If you think the source has potential to be used in your research, click on the full text link to read it. Keep in mind that similar keywords can be used if you don't find good results in your first search. For example, instead of alternative energy sources, you could try renewable energy. Instead of bioenergy, you could try biofuel. And instead of climate change, you could try global warming. Finally, you can also search for specific sources by author or title by using the drop down menu next to the search bar when doing an advanced search. For example, if you found the title of what you believe would serve as a good source for your project in your Wikipedia research but weren't able to access it for free on the internet, you could try searching for it by typing the title into the search bar and selecting Title from the drop-down menu. If you don't have any luck finding the source in one of the research databases, try searching for it in the library catalog instead. Aim to use a variety of sources as support in your essay. Using a quotation from a subject matter expert can help to build your essay's credibility while using statistics from a scientific study could help appeal to your reader's logical side. Don't forget that you may need to find a source that you can use to provide context or background on your topic for your reader, and you should also be able to discuss opposing viewpoints if you're writing an argumentative essay. 
If information from your sources inspires you to ask additional questions about your topic, add those questions to your KWL chart and do more research if necessary. As you research, think about the significance of your topic. Why does your claim matter and how does it affect you, the people you care about, and the people who are going to read your essay? Think about how you can synthesize the ideas expressed in your sources in order to highlight your own ideas on the topic. Simply repeating what others have already said does not do much to add to the current academic conversation on your topic. Remember that your ultimate goal in researching and writing should be to share your voice and your ideas and maybe even make a difference in the world you live in. After completing your research, take a few minutes to reflect on what you've learned about your topic. Fill out the L column of your KWL chart by writing down what you learned from your sources and answering your questions from the W column. Are the answers different from what you expected or surprising in some way? Did you learn more than you set out to? Does any of this new information make you want to change the focus of your essay? Next, take a look back at your working thesis. Did your research reveal information that makes you want to tweak the wording of your thesis? Did you find a supporting point that was more interesting than one of your original points? or discover that one of your points is not as strong as you thought it would be. More importantly, does your overall claim still hold true? Sometimes more detailed research may cause you to take a different stance on your topic altogether, and that's okay. It's easy to make adjustments to your working thesis at this stage, and you likely learned enough about your topic from your research to develop new points if necessary. After reflecting on your research, you can move on to the final steps of the writing process, which are covered in more detail in my presentation called The Writing Process. Structure your ideas by creating an outline for your essay. Your introduction should end with your thesis. Each body paragraph should start with a transition and a topic sentence that introduces each of your supporting points. Depending on your purpose, your topic, and the type of essay you're writing, you may need to include context or background on your topic, along with opposing viewpoints. Your supporting points should be backed by the evidence from your research. When drafting your essay, use either summary, paraphrasing, or quoting to integrate source material into your writing. Remember that quoting should be used most often but keep in mind that quotations should only make up about 10 to 15% of your overall essay. Introduce quotations with signal phrases that provide information about the source. End your quotations with citations and include the full bibliographic details of your sources at the end of your essay. For more details on integrating sources, see my presentation called Integrating Sources. And for more details on documenting and formatting your sources, see my presentation called Documenting and Formatting Sources. Don't forget to revise your essay as well. In this step, you may again find that your thesis needs to be adjusted to better reflect your claim and main ideas. Remember that experienced writers use revision to make improvements and spend significantly more time revising than drafting. Finally, finish your writing project by editing your work. Let's review. In this presentation, we discussed how to understand the difference between primary sources and secondary sources, set up a system to organize your sources, come up with keywords to search for sources, and find both physical and electronic sources through a library to use as support in your writing assignment for your working thesis. Thanks for watching.